ביום שישי, ה' באייר תש"ח, 14 במאי 1948, אחר הצהריים, באו המוזמנים אל בניין מוזיאון תל אביב בשדרות רוטשילד 16. הם התבקשו לשמור את סיבת ההזמנה, טקס הכרזת העצמאות, בסוד. אבל בבואם מצאו את חצי העיר ממתינה להם. ועל יסוד החלטת עשרת האומות המוחדות, אנו מכריזים בזאת על הקמת מדינה יהודית בארץ ישראל, היא מדינת ישראל. בצור ישראל, הננו חותמים בחתימת ידינו לעדות על הכרזה זו. May 14, 1948, 4pm תל אביב. On a small podium stands a determined Zionist leader before a hastily convened gathering, reading out a proclamation which would change the course of history. This is how the state of Israel was born. First, a bit of background. At the end of World War I, the Allied powers gained control over the Middle East, including the land of Israel. The League of Nations recognized the historical connection of the Jewish people to their land and granted Great Britain a mandate to help them reconstitute a national home. However, Arab riots and geopolitical considerations led to a series of British restrictions on Jewish development and immigration. Even ships, including displaced children and Holocaust survivors, were sent back to Europe. Jewish resistance grew as well. By 1947, the ball was back in the United Nations court, where a majority of the nations decided on November 29th, after a tense vote, to divide the land into a Jewish and an Arab state. May 15, 1948, was the date the British mandate officially ended. The date the Jewish state was to be declared. And on Friday, May 14th, in the presence of local Jewish leaders, he declares the establishment of the State of Israel. The proclamation, which was inspired by the American Declaration of Independence, asserted the historical and moral rights of the Jewish people in its historic homeland and defined Israel as a Jewish democratic state based on equal rights, freedom, and justice. The declaration ended with a call on Jews to return home and extended a hand for peace towards the local Arab population and neighboring Arab countries. When you hear the word Israel, what goes through your mind? Probably this image. Or this. Definitely this. So here are 68 facts you probably didn't know about Israel. Israel is a young country. A mere baby. Israel's population is just 1.6% of the entire population in the Middle East and takes up only one-tenth of 1% 1 of the region's area, which means it's tiny. Basically, you can cross the entire country in less than five hours from snow-covered Mount Hermon to the sizzling beaches of Elat. Israel is third in the world in the consumption of sweets and vegetables. Israel was the first country in the world to ban commercial starring underweight models. Israel has the highest number of academics per capita in the world and the highest proportion of startups and of museums as well. Tel Aviv is home to 80,000 dogs that enjoy more than 60 dog parks. And the biggest dog cemetery dating back to ancient times was discovered in Israel in Ashkelon. <laughs> Speaking of ancient places, Jerusalem, one of the oldest cities in the world, is also the smartest one, as it was the first in the world to be completely covered by Wi-Fi, which you'll need to find one of the best hostels in the world, the Abraham Hostel in Jerusalem. Another ancient city is Be'er Sheva, 4,000 years old. Nowadays, it has the most chess masters per capita in the world. With all due respect to chess, the most popular beach sport in Israel, and probably its national sport, is matkot. There's no score, just the fun of ruining the quiet of the seashore. Books. Israel is number two in the world in book publishing. People of the book, remember? Wait, who's number one? At least we're in first place when it comes to translating literary masterpieces from foreign languages. The USB stick is an Israeli invention which saves us lots of storage space. Israel is among the 10 leading countries in life expectancy. Folks here live on average to the ripe old age of 83. Israel has 273 kilometers of beaches, hugging the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Dead Sea, and the Sea of Galilee, the lowest sweetwater lake in the world. According to the New Testament, Jesus walked on the water here. This rescue board is called a hasake. It was invented here in the 1930s by a Jewish lifeguard. If you have a problem staying above water, the Dead Sea is the place for you. The salt concentration there is so high, anyone can stay afloat. Israel is one of only eight countries that have sent a satellite into space. The busiest bird migration route in the world goes through Israel. A billion birds pass through here every year. 
According to Traveller's Digest, Tel Aviv is in the top 10 for cities with the world's most beautiful women. And yes, also among the top 10 when it comes to good-looking men. But women in Israel have much more to offer than just a pretty face. Israeli women also have more academic degrees than the men do. So if you are the next Mary Curie, this is the place for you. Not for nothing is Israel known as the startup nation. There are more than 3,000 high-tech companies and startups in Israel. That's the highest concentration in the world outside of Silicon Valley. So what was invented here? The technology that allows us to chat in WhatsApp, Messenger, and everything else you youngsters spend your time on. The world's first antivirus software. Gesture controlled and hands-free computers. Technology to prevent traffic accidents. Taxi service app. Remember when you had to wave your hand for a taxi? <laughs> a social network that allows you to steer clear of traffic jams. A really small pill that can photograph your body from the inside. How does it get out? Solar energy water heater. Irrigation system that conserves water. Painless hair removal. Well, almost painless. Anti-jellyfish sting gel. Laser keyboard. The technology that enabled unmanned flight. Cherry tomatoes and rummy cup. The popular board game. Krembo, chocolate-coated marshmallow treat. It may originally have been a Danish confection, but in the winter, Israelis eat more than 50 million Krembos. Bamba, a peanut-flavored snack created in Israel. On top of being popular and delicious, research has shown that it helps children build immunity to peanut allergy. And to continue with the yummy stuff, even though Italy is the birthplace of ice cream, consumption in Israel is 10 liters a year. Respect and brain freeze. Ice cream is all about the quality of the milk. Israeli cows are world champions in milk production. Since she's a champion, she's got an attitude. Tel Aviv is known as one of the vegan capitals of the world. Or how about some sushi? Tel Aviv is only second to Tokyo in sushi bars per square meter. Wine has been made here for more than 3,000 years. And even then, the local wine industry didn't win as many international awards as it does today. And speaking of prestigious awards, none is more prestigious than the Nobel, right? Nine Israelis have won the Nobel Prize in Sciences. The last one was Professor Dan Schechtman for the discovery of the quasi-periodic crystal. See if you can say five times really fast quasi-periodic crystal. Israel also grows flowers. Flowers, lots of flowers. For last Valentine's Day, Israel shipped more than 60 million flowers to Europe. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Israel is not a monarchy, but does have a queen. Her name is Dana International, and she's the first transgender to win the Eurovision contest. Time Out magazine has crowned Tel Aviv as gay capital of the Middle East. And speaking of divas, Lady Gaga's shoe designer is Israeli. They are indeed beautiful, but really difficult to walk in, especially if you're in Haifa and need to climb its green hills. For that, the shortest train line in the world was constructed to take you right to the top of Mount Carmel. And while we're in Haifa, did you know that it is the most multi-ethnic city in Israel? It has Jews, Christians, Muslims, both Sunnis and Shias, Druze and Baha'is. Did you know that Israel is the only place in the world where the number of trees increases year by year? Even with all these forests, 60% of Israel is desert, which didn't prevent us from turning the barren desert into productive farmland. A desert doesn't have much water, so Israel was forced to lead the world in desalination technologies. Israeli scientists developed treatments for multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and most important, discovered the cause of halitosis. Yes, yes, bad breath. Israelis are also not too shabby when it comes to sports. Maccabi Tel Aviv took the European Championship six times. In judo and windsurfing, Israel is an Olympic powerhouse. And if you're still not impressed, what would you say to the fact that the Emmy-winning series Homeland was written in Israel? Or that more than a million notes are stuffed into the Western Wall every year. Where does God find the time to read them all? And, and Hebrew is such an ancient language that if a modern-day Israeli would meet his ancestor from 2,000 years ago, they would be able to carry on a conversation. <sighs> One more left? Well, all right. Have you heard of the Global Happiness Index? Neither had I until now. But apparently, Israelis are in the 11th spot out of 196 countries. And if that doesn't satisfy you, maybe you should find someone to talk to about it. Hang on a minute, that was only 68 facts. That video was done five years ago. It's now Israel's 73rd birthday. Let's go find out five more facts. As I'm sure you know, Israel doesn't get a lot of rain. So they developed the first drip irrigation system to help sort out its crops that's now used all over the world. They've also created the first ever manned electric plane. Did you know that bees help create 30% of the world's food? So Israel created an AI beehive to help support each and every single bee. I'm sure you've all heard of this little thing called COVID-19, but Israel have been the world leaders in vaccinations, vaccinating more people per 100,000 than anywhere else in the world. And the 73rd fact I have for you about Israel for its 73rd birthday, it's the place that I was born. And it's also the place where I played for the Israeli youth national basketball team before I moved to England. 
It's also where my family live, who I haven't seen for a very long time due to COVID. And I can't wait to see, hopefully very soon, on a nice sunny Tel Aviv beach. Now let's go listen to some other stories from teachers who have another deep connection to Israel. So when I think about um, what Israel means to me and why I love Israel, my first thought um, goes to my sister and my nephew. So this is my sister Sophie and my nephew Yair, and they both live in Israel. So hi Sophie, hi Yair. Hi. And um, Sophie, when did you move to Israel and why did you make that decision to move there? Um, I moved to Israel in 2016 after visiting numerous times on different programs. The first was with, with KS um, Year 9 Israel trip. Um, and after I did a gap year with FZY, I came back, studied history at the University of Birmingham and decided that I wanted to move to Israel and did so afterwards. And what do you love about Israel? Um, I love the history, the culture and the food. And what are you and your ear doing to celebrate Yom Hatzmah? Um, in the tomorrow evening we are um, having a meal with the whole kibbutz and then on Thursday we'll have a barbecue as a family and there's lots of bouncy castles and activities for the kids to enjoy. Well thank you so much um, for speaking to us and your ear thank you too. Yom Hatzmah Sameach. The first time I was given the opportunity to visit Israel was when I was in year nine at the school in Solomon. I was given the chance to go on a two week trip with all my friends and with some amazing teachers and we got to see this incredible country that we'd only ever learned about in school. I got to witness the amazing landscapes and how they changed from deserts and rising camels to the Kotel in Jerusalem on a Friday night. The experience was one I'll never forget and that's always stuck with me. Going forward in year 11, I was given the chance to go on tour with FZY, an organisation that arranged for Jewish students to go to Israel for a little bit longer. We were given a little bit more um, responsibilities because we were older, which was a lot more fun. We got to go to Tel Aviv and Haifa for the day, which again shows such different landscapes within Israel. Then when I was at university, I was given a chance to go for another two weeks where I met some of my best friends today. And again, we got to see some incredible different sites that Israel has to offer. Things, again, that I'd only ever learned about in school uh, were brought to life for me, which has always stuck with me. When I decided to come here and teach, I knew that there was an Israel trip that the school ran because I'd been on it myself. So when I was given the chance to take our current year 13s, and our current year 12s on Israel trip. That was something which I was delighted to do. Seeing the way that they developed a love for the same country that I had from that very same trip was all I could ever ask for. Watching them dance with the cocktail on a Friday night, riding the camels in the desert, hiking up Masada at four o'clock in the morning with all the moaning that we all do because it's so early. They were just incredible and they made me so proud. Um, and that for me was all I could ask for that trip, for them to love that country the same way that I did back when I was in year nine at school. Israel is my homeland. It's the place where I was born and where I grew up. I went to nursery in Israel, to primary school, to high school, and even to university. My family lived there. My parents and grandparents would always tell me how they were praying and dreaming of reaching the land of Israel when they were in Yemen. And finally, a year after Israel became a country, they arrived to Israel in 1949. Israel for me is the family, is the food, is the sun, is the sea, and I love Israel very much. Happy 73rd Israel, Yom Ha'atzma'ut Sameach, happy birthday. Okay, what does uh, Israel mean for me? Uh, Israel mean, it has a really special place in my heart because uh, I have been a few times, uh, the first time I went, uh, I, it was when from 99 to 2000, and I received the millennium in the middle of the Lake uh, Tiberis on a, on a boat, and it was a very, very special uh, occasion. 
And then I went uh, to a wedding, which is an amazing uh, experience. Uh, and I traveled all around uh, Israel again. And the last time I went to the school with a school trip, and that was my favorite time ever. Uh, I love the people, I love the, the, the culture. I really enjoyed um, having such a mixture of, of, of cultures all in one in country. And the, the thing I, I also enjoyed the most, I think, it was the food. It has to be the food for, for me as a Spanish. It's, it's, it's so important. So, um, yeah, um, a, a beautiful country. It really has, a, as I said, a, a special place in my heart. And uh, I love it even more. Obviously, I feel very close to it. Working in, a, in, a, in, a, in the school uh, I work, I feel very, very close to it. That's all. What Israel means to me? I feel a connection to Israel because Israel is a happy place to me. It's a place where I would go to find comfort, to find peace, and it makes me very happy as well. It's a very spiritual place where they respect you, they welcome you, and they can make you feel part of their community, sharing everything they have, and in a way, this, it makes me feel like home because it reminds me of our school, where our community, everybody is valued in here. No matter who you are, no matter what you think, you're always going to feel valued in here. You're always going to feel loved and accepted. And to me, that's why I feel that Israel is a very happy place and that's why I feel this connection and saying that I just want to wish Israel a happy birthday Yom Hatzazamut and enjoy the day Israel is probably one of the most special places that I hold extremely dear because of the experiences that I had there growing up um, I chose to do a gap year in Israel after my time at Cantor King Solomon sit form. And I went with FZY and part of my experiences were to go to Alpan for three months and learn some Hebrew. And I did some work experience working within a hospital, orth orthopedic ward, um, working within agriculture and I also worked within a primary school and it was actually from there, from working within the primary school, that I found my love for working within education. And I probably wouldn't be where I am now, working at Cantor King Solomon, if it wasn't for that experience. Because coming from, you know, being a student, you kind of want to get out of education, you want to get out of school. And I took that time within Israel to really explore my surroundings and my culture and history and it was the best year of my life but for me despite where I am now and what it led to the most cherished three months of the whole year had to be my time in Marva in the army where I just it was it was a whirlwind experience of getting up at 5 a.m and doing marches and learning how to shoot and defend for a country that quite frankly has had a lot to defend themselves um, against and it's just the place itself is special there's there's nowhere like it there's not many ways that I can describe it except for to say that it feels like home it feels like when you touch down in Israel you get off the plane you feel like you're at home, you feel accepted, you feel welcomed, you feel happy. And I visit every year if I can. I have family and friends out there. And as soon as this pandemic is over and we can travel, I will most definitely be going to visit them.